Welcome to part three of the evidence-based practice series. To review, in the first video we learned the basic concepts underlying the evidence-based practice process. The next video described creating research questions using PICO. In this video we're going to talk about the evidence-based practice pyramid, the different levels of research evidence, and how to determine the research level of an article. This is good information to have before we begin searching in the databases. This is just one of many evidence pyramids out there. I like this one because it's not overly complicated and it's pretty. It represents research evidence as a hierarchy with the highest quality evidence located at the top. The pyramid shape is used because there tends to be a lot less of the high quality information. That's not to say that the information types at the bottom are bad or even poor quality. They are just at a higher risk of bias and are less applicable to a wider group of patients. This pyramid is divided into a filtered and unfiltered section. Filtered means that an expert or experts have reviewed the information for accuracy, quality, reliability, and so on. The unfiltered have not. Again, this doesn't make these studies bad, it just means that they haven't gone through an extra level of scrutiny. This pyramid, or one like it, is something almost all health sciences students are exposed to either in an evidence-based practice course or in a research course. A common question I receive from students is, my professor told me to find information that is a high level of evidence. This is usually followed up with, and I have no idea what this means. High level generally means something towards the top of this pyramid. We're going to go through the primary higher quality study types to describe each and learn where to find them. When it comes to finding evidence-based information, this is one of the biggies. A systematic review is usually written by a group of researchers, sometimes including a librarian, who provide an unbiased, comprehensive review of all relevant studies on a particular clinical or health-related topic or question. They are supposed to review all the information from both published and unpublished studies. That whole, all the information should give you pause. Seriously, who is going to review everything on a topic? Well, these groups do. It's why it can take up to two years or even longer to complete a systematic review. It is important to distinguish a literature review from a systematic review. There tends to be a lot of confusion about this with our students. You'll generally see a literature review in the introduction section of many research articles. It lets you know that the authors reviewed some of the research related to their paper. Unless they're incorporating all the research there is, this is not a systematic review. I get some students who tell me that their professor wants them to do a systematic review for a class project, or PhD students who say they want to do a systematic review for their dissertation. Generally, neither of these is a true systematic review, especially for just a semester-long course. There are other review types out there, which don't quite reach the level of systematic, but are perfectly okay for a student project or dissertation. A meta-analysis is a subset of a systematic review. It takes the process one step further by applying statistical analyses to evaluate all the different studies as if they were one. So with a systematic review, you could look at 10 separate studies on smoking cessation to draw a conclusion about effective treatments. With a meta-analysis, you treat the studies as one, after a lot of statistics. So you can be looking at a total subject number, or n, in the tens or even hundreds of thousands. I've heard meta-analyses compared to creating a rope. Just one strand is not very strong, but when you combine many, you have something you can rely on. This is considered the best of the best when it comes to evidence-based information. Where can you find systematic reviews or meta-analyses? Cochrane is the big one. It's a database primarily of just systematic reviews, many of which are also meta-analyses. Both PubMed and CINAHL have filters that allow you to limit to just a meta-analysis or a systematic review. Very handy. PubMed also has a great search tool called Clinical Queries, which runs a bunch of evidence-based practice algorithms in the background. You don't even have to think about it. Just run your search. And Joanna Briggs has been described as the Cochrane for nurses. It includes qualitative, quality of life, and subjective research, where Cochrane is much more focused on the quantitative and interventional research. Critically appraised topics are where the literature on a particular disease, condition, treatment, or so on, is evaluated according to evidence-based criteria. These are sort of like systematic reviews, but not quite as rigorous. At the ISU library, you can use the Dynamed database. It's super easy to search, and it's all evidence-based. What's not to like? The National Guideline Clearinghouse is available to search for free. They have a ton of guidelines on all kinds of topics. You can use filters within both PubMed and CINAHL to limit to just practice guidelines. 
very easy. A source for critically appraised individual articles is something like the ACP Journal Club. Experts review articles on a given topic to make treatment and practice recommendations. Under the top section are the unfiltered resources. Some of these can provide great evidence, but generally no independent group has appraised them according to evidence-based protocols. This category makes up the majority of health sciences research. And out of the unfiltered resources, I'm only going to focus on randomized control trials. No sense totally overwhelming you. A randomized control trial is a study that assigns participants into a control group and some to an experimental group. Obviously, there's way more to it than that, but that's my two cent explanation. This is truly the backbone of health sciences research. It's not an easy type of research to do, and it can be expensive in terms of both dollars and time. But a well done randomized control trial can control for the differences in the participants and for bias at many different levels. Throw a rock into PubMed and you're going to hit a randomized control trial. They're everywhere. There is wide variability in quality, which is why these are listed in the middle section of the evidence-based pyramid. Okay, let's do a quick review of what we just covered. High quality evidence is what most students, faculty, and healthcare providers are looking for when doing research. This is represented at the top of the evidence-based practice pyramid. The best studies are meta-analyses, systematic reviews, and well done randomized control trials. Sources such as Guidelines and Dynamed help synthesize existing research and generally are done according to evidence-based practice principles. Now we know what study types we want to find, so how do you know what type of study a research article falls into? A lot of the times it's going to tell you right in the title. How convenient! If it doesn't list the study type in the title, look in the abstract or even in the methods section of the full article. Generally, the higher level studies will always include the type of study in the title or abstract, so you won't have to go digging. If you can't find the listed research method type in the title, abstract, or methods section, it's generally safe to say that this is not a high level of research evidence. Many students are given research assignments where they're required to locate high-level research evidence. The evidence-based practice pyramid can help both you and the students narrow down the search. The two types of studies you want to focus on are meta-analyses and systematic reviews. Thankfully, most of the major health sciences databases have limiters for these study types. In order to determine the study type, you usually just need to read the title or look in the abstract. After watching the three videos in this series, you should be able to identify basic concepts related to evidence-based practice in healthcare. You should be able to know how to use PICO to build an amazing research question. And you should now know how to find high-level research. For more details on how to search each of the resources covered, you can go to my YouTube Health Sciences Research Playlist. Thank you for sticking through the videos. You deserve an adorable sloth picture. The health sciences students and faculty will really appreciate the added expertise.